everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty card, which when opened reveals this gorgeous concertina fold. Now I was actually requested to do this, I was sent a picture by a lady called Linda. So I had a little look on Pinterest and lots of them just make it with just this centerpiece and keep it like that. But like with my other, my book fold card, I like to add it to this base here and I also wanted it to be five by seven so I have changed this to, for, these are my own measurements um, and I've altered it slightly to work for me so this all folds into a five by seven card base and it will fit nicely into your envelope and if I just bring it up there you can see all the panels with all the fun unicorns, birthday cake, shooting stars, rainbows, it's really really pretty. Okay, so to make this card, I'm going to be using the new Chasing Rainbows paper pack by First Edition. It's gorgeous. If you hadn't seen my What's in the Box video, which I shared a few days ago, then I will link that one up here and you'll be able to see all of the papers in this pack and what I received from my latest Trim Craft Design Team uh, box over on that video. So that's the paper pack and that's the 8x8. For the lovely happy birthday there, which is heat embossed, you can just see there, that's using these gorgeous, really nice sentiments. They're actually called Big Birthday Words and it's the Woodware Collection. I'll share the links to these, but I've used all three now so you can see they've all got stains there, but they're really lovely and they're, they're just one of those kind of timeless stamps they're gonna keep, you know, forever. So that's those. Then for the back here, which is where you will write your message, unless you do want to, you know, find somewhere here to do it than you can do. I've used the Crafty Panda and this is the Magical Unicorn stamp set and I used the Have a Magical Day one there. Then I am also using the Mermaid and Unicorn. This is the mirrored card pack. Again, this was in my unboxing video and I've used this gorgeous color here and they're just, I mean, they are stunning. So, and this is everything. Okay, so I've done a template because I think that's always handy and you do always say that you enjoy it and find it much easier to follow when I have a template. Like I said, this is gonna be a five by seven card base. So I've already cut this piece here. So this is a piece of 10 by seven and along the 10 inch side, you want to score at five inches, okay? Fold it in half and there's my card base. I've got this really nice kind of bubble gum pink that I'm gonna be using. For the actual concertina piece inside, I've got a white piece of cardstock here, which is 10 and a half by six and three quarters. And that is this piece here, okay? So that is what I'm gonna be showing you and doing all this scoring. Then the piece that slots inside, so this is this piece here, I used leftover from this 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, which this was, so I've got matching. Again, it doesn't matter if it isn't, but that's how I've got you know everything to kind of match up. I've just used the same card from that piece. So this is five by seven, okay? We'll do all the scoring for those in a minute. Then to mat and layer the very front of the card, so this one here. Now I've only got one here, but on this one I'm doing two and also I won't be showing you all of this decoration because this one may well be personalized so I just wanted to keep it plain for the minute until I know what I'm doing. This top piece here is four and three quarters by six and three quarters and then this piece is going to layer on top and this is four and a half by six and a half. If I just bring it up there you can see that really nice star print and how gorgeous that cardstock looks. So that's those ones, so I've done all of them. Then to decorate that concertina part all inside, you need two pieces that are one and a half by six and a half. So I've got these pattern pieces and they're gonna go on the two outer ones here. Then for all of these eight squares, you will need eight pieces that are one and a half by one and a half, okay? So I've got that nice pink, so you can see how everything's gonna work together. And then these here are for these four panels on the inside. And these again are one and a half by four and a half. Okay, so again, I wanted to make all those measurements really easy to cut down. So for that internal piece, this bit here that sits in the middle, this is that seven by five piece. Along the seven inch side, you want to score at one and three quarters, then flip it over, don't rotate, just flip it, and then score at three and a half, then flip it back again and score at five and a quarter. That way now, the first one you're gonna make a mountain, 
the middle a valley and then the last one a mountain and by just flipping the, the you know the pet the cardstock and scoring it will now prevent any cracking and that's what you want so you've got an M shape okay two mountains and a valley so that piece is now all ready so just pop that to one side then we've got this piece here and we've got our template so along the ten and a half inch side you're going to score make sure I get it right right, right. You're going to score at one and three quarters, then flip it over, score at three and a half, flip it over and score at five and a quarter, flip it over and score at seven, and flip it over and score at eight and three quarters. Okay? Then flip it, no, rotate it onto the six and three quarters of an inch side. And we're going to do these two score lines here, so this one and this one. But you want to miss this section and not go past this section here. So the easiest way to do that is with a ruler. And you want to line your ruler up at one and three quarters. So we're then going to create all of these will be one and three quarters squared. And the same if that line did continue, that would be one and three quarters squared. So with your ruler, line it up just at one and three quarters, but you want to make sure your stylus is in the one and three quarter marker, okay? And then make sure your ruler matches up all the way down to the bottom here as well. So I'm just going to just line that up a little bit better there. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is just hover along this first section. And when you get to this first score line, which is this score line here, that's when you want to start scoring. And your stylus should just naturally fall into the track. Okay, and go all the way down until you get down to here. Okay. I'll just bring that one up. You should just be able to work out. There we go. I've already done that one. You can just see my score line just down here. Okay, keeping it in that same position, you then want to come across. And at five inches, you want to do the same thing. So line your ruler up. Hover it over that first section and from that first score line you want to score all the way down to the last score line. Okay, so you're just scoring in between the first and the last score line. Now you can see now if I turn that around this way, we're going to be cutting this whole section away. Okay. We will do these little kind of, these are more pencil lines which we will eventually cut, but we'll do them, I think it's a bit easier to do once we've cut away this middle section. So if I just remove my scoreboard. Okay. And then with this here, just so you can kind of see how I'm working on here. I mean, ideally you'd save this piece in the inside, but I'm just going to scribble over it just so you can see where I'm working. So all I've done is scribbled this section here on my cardstock. Again, you can just make out all of my score lines there. So next again, with your ruler, make sure you've got a self-healing mat or some you know good surface to cut against. And with my cutting knife, make sure you use a metal ruler or if you've got the Tim Holtz ruler here, this has got the metal on the side. And I'm just gonna line my ruler up with this this score line here, so that inner one that we've just done, that is between that score line and that one. Line your ruler up against that. And you want to cut away the score line, so I'm going to cut more to this side here, so I'm removing all of that black line, rather than to the left, say here, and then you would see it. So just bring your ruler up just a little bit, so you're actually removing that section, like so. Make sure everything is nice and lined up, and then you want to just try and do it in one Continual movements. Okay, now you can see, and then flip it around and do the same on the other side. Okay, so now you can see I've got those two. And then you just want to join it up. So now I'm going to cut down here to here and here to here. Okay, so now I've just taken that piece out. You do need to really spend time on it. You want to make sure that you try and get them point to point and you don't kind of cut over more on one side and the other from the other. Okay, so like I said, if you haven't done what I've just done there, then you can keep that, although I could probably use the other side for something. So now what you want to do, while it's all still flat and before you burnish your score lines, is we need to do these lines here. And these are these cut lines 
just on there for us to be able to kind of wedge this piece in the middle. Now each of these are three quarters of an inch long and they are halfway along each square which is seven eighths of an inch. So again with your ruler pop it start it in the center in the sorry start it in this like rectangle here so I can see that that score line is at one and three quarters okay so that is my one and three quarters square. Like I said, half an inch, um, seven eighths of an inch is halfway. So I'm just putting a little pencil mark just there. Now I'm going to keep this in place, my ruler, and I'm just going to do seven eighths of an inch again. So that will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So at two and five eighths, you want to do another little marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then at four and three eighths, do another marker. Then at six and one eighth, and that's it there. If I just bring that up, you can just see all my little pencil marks, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Rotate it all the way around and do exactly the same again, and those same measurements that I just said. Okay, once you've got all your markers in place, you then want to pop it in this orientation. Okay, and then you need to draw a pencil line that's three quarters of an inch. So, like so. Just going to keep my ruler in place there and just go down three quarters of an inch. And you're going to cut this and you actually cut the pencil away in the end, but can you see now these pencil lines, they're three quarters of an inch long. One there and one there. And just do that on all of those little markings. Okay, so that's now what you should have. See all my pencil marks there and there. And now we can cut up them. Okay, so I'm just going to use my snips and it's easier. That's why I thought get this piece removed first and then do this, it's, it just is much easier. And just try and very neatly, again in one cut, just cut all the way up there. Now you will cut this again when the card stock's on it, but I found that it was a bit easier to just start off like this and then when we cut little wedges away, we do that when we've stuck our other piece of card stock on top. It all makes sense in a moment. So now I've just cut little slits in all of them. Again, I'm not going to burnish it yet. I'm going to leave that till the very end because it's much easier to work on when it's flat and you can add all of your decoration on, which is what we're now going to do next. So with all these pieces, you've got these ones that are going to go on here, the ends. All my little squares are going to go over the top. Like I said, don't worry that we've cut because we're going to be flipping it over to cut again. But I just found it much easier to do it this way. Now these eight, I'm going to make sure I've got my geometric shape right way up that's going to go like that and then these four are going to go on this one here like that okay so I'm going to go and get that all stuck down okay so now that's my panel all decorated I'll do those in a moment now flip it over and go back in and cut exactly where you did before so you're just kind of tracing that cut really okay and then you just want to take a very very small wedge off of one side and I mean small it is literally a slither and you need to do this when you've got both pieces on because obviously it needs to come off both pieces but if you see there it's the tiniest amount it's so small because you've got to imagine you're going to have quite thick cardstock wedged between there. But now if I lie that down, can you see, you can just see the kind of little gap that I've made. So I'm just taking it off of the, the right hand side um, one and you want to go right up to the top. So obviously that's where the card's going to go right up into. So yeah, I guess it's a little bit fiddly. You can use your knife for this if you want, but I just find I've got way more control when I use my snips. And a lot of this will still be covered. So don't worry if you have made me done one a bit bigger than the other. I mean, you look at that now, you wouldn't know. You, you can't even see, you know, the joins really. So it's, yeah, it's quite forgiving still. So don't, you know, don't worry too much if you are a little bit out. Or if, like you said, one's a bit bigger than the other. And also by doing that, it will allow your card to fold much better. But can you just see now, there's little kind of tiny wedges all the way along. Okay, so you're gonna fold, so you've got a, a, a valley, then mountain, then valley, then mountain. 
and you're going to end with a valley. Okay, and again, by doing those score lines the way we did, it will prevent any cracking. But now you can see we've got this cool shape. Next, we're going to be using this piece. I'm just going to stick these down. Okay, so I've stuck them down. I've just realised they're actually too short. I don't know where I got the measurement from, so I could have sworn I'd done it against this one. So this length is four and a half. What did I do? Four and a half. So maybe, ah, oh, I must have cut that down. Four and three quarters. Ah. Okay, this pink piece, I need to do a little bit of doctoring. Okay, so this pink piece actually needs to be four and three quarters, which I can just do without ruining anything. So I thought they didn't match. So I'll just put a little um, caption when I give the measurements for this pink piece, but it should be four and three quarters, not five. But that's okay, I've saved it. So yeah, all of those measurements were fine. You just need to bring that down to four and three quarters instead of five. And then you've already folded that because I told you. I'm gonna just stick these two on the front of my card. Okay, that's all stuck down. And also what I've just realized, it wasn't three quarters of an inch, it was seven eighths of an inch. You just need to just go up just a little bit more. Again, you're not really gonna see, see it like that, so don't worry too much. Then with this piece, you have your M shape, and I've got everything folded in, everything stuck down there. And then just pop them in so that you've got your valley, you've got your mountain fold, and then you want your valley to be underneath it. So again, keeping it in that M shape, I slide that in now. You can see where the two mountains are, you've got the two valleys directly below. So again, if I just then pull this one up, kind of like bend it out a little bit, don't worry, it shouldn't you know, rip or anything, because you've got your layers and everything on, and then bring that one down. Kind of slide them about a little bit until you get them into place. And then if you try to fold it together, it will obviously not quite go. So you just need to move them until you've got them kind of all halfway. And they will slowly start to go like so. I bring that all up. And that's how a lot of people kept the card, just like that. But I like it stuck inside, but look how cool that looks. So once it's in, it's in, it will not go anywhere. That is stuck now. And you need it to be nice and straight, which it is. Cool, isn't it? I really, really like it. See what I mean? You're not, you don't really see all your cuts, the little slits that you've, you've kind of created there because this is in over the top. So now open up your card base and I'm gonna use my wet glue and you're just going to put glue on the two outer sides. So, okay, do one at a time. So what you want to do is hold it up. You want to make sure that your border here is the same here and here, which mine is. And just stick that down, make sure it's nice and secure. Wet glue is good. If you're going to use double-sided, make sure you cover every part of it. Because obviously this is quite a lot going on with it. So you don't want it to start lifting in like the corners. So that's why I found the wet glue works best. Come around this side, lift up this one and do the same. And again, kind of lift that up without this sticking down yet. So you just brought that up and it will give you that time to kind of hover over the top. And then you can really see that you're getting it bang on. You get that same frame. And it should stand up at a perfect right angle. And this also creates another cool way to have it and that's landscape and I'll show you. And that's that way. You see how that looks? And it will stand up that way as well. So there are, yeah two ways that you can have this card that way or you can have it landscape and that's it guys it's a really lovely concertina fold card i think it looks fantastic that way landscape and it closes up perfectly when you squeeze it down on the back here you just need to cut a white piece of cardstock that's the, yeah four and three quarters by six and three quarters and just stick that on the back there i would stamp and write your message and everything maybe before you stick it down but it's, yeah, it's perfect. And um, it's a really lovely card. What a nice surprise when somebody opens it to see that. So there you have it, two really nice, unusual cards. So that's that one there, and then that's that one there. And I think they look fantastic. I'll just bring that one up a bit closer so you can really see, again, how it's decorated. 
and obviously if it was that way as well with all that pattern on the side there it looks really cool and um, yeah I think they look fantastic so I hope you've enjoyed this card if you have please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye